Welcome everyone to uh, lecture five from this series on fluids and electrolytes. Uh, this is the book Manual Fluid, Electrolyte and Acid-Based Disorders, a Pathophysiologic Approach to Common Clinical Problems. I'm Dr. Mohamed Tinawi. And this is the book. You can find it on Amazon. More information is in the uh, description. We are still on chapter one, disorders of water balance, hyponatremia and hypernatremia, and this is part five. Today we are going to continue to talk about osmolar clearance and free water clearance, and also we're going to talk about electrolyte free water clearance. So we can think of urine volume consisting of two components. The first component contains all the osmos in a concentration similar to the plasma. This is isoosmolar, similar to the plasma. The second component is free water. Let's assume that we have someone with a plasma osmolality of 290 milliosmo per kilogram of water. And let's assume that this person is making two liters of urine and that the urine osmolality is 145 milliosmol. We can think of this urine consisting of one liter of free water added to one liter of isoosmolar urine, which uh, the, the osmolality is what? 290. So if we mix them, now we get two liters with an osmolality of 145. Or you can think of it as if we take the, the two liters of 145 milliosmol per liter, and if we extract, if we remove one liter of free water, then we are left with one liter of 290 milliosmol, which is similar to the plasma. Now, we said let's call urine volume V, let's call the free water portion, free water clearance, CH2O, and this is again a volume, and let's call the portion that is isoosmolar to the plasma osmolar clearance, or COSM, therefore urine volume is C. H2O plus COSM. So this big volume consists of two other volumes. So free water clearance and osmolar clearance are both volumes. So again, urine volume equals osmolar clearance and free water clearance. The equation is V equals COSM plus CH2O. Now, how can we calculate COSM? Well, we need urine osmolality and we need plasma osmolality. So we divide urine osmolality by plasma osmolality and the, then we multiply the answer by V and this is how we get C osm or how we get osmolar clearance. Now if we know urine volume then we, we can know free water clearance. So free water clearance will be V minus C osm or if we, need, if we know free water clearance we can conclude that C osm equals V minus C H2O because both of them combined form the urine volume. Okay, so based on this we said that the equation for free water clearance is, as you can see on the screen, V1 minus urine osm divided by plasma osm. So if you know one, you know the other, uh, and uh, that's, that's easy enough. Now uh, let's take an example. We have a 50-year-old woman with normal plasma sodium, normal plasma potassium, and she has a plasma osmolality of 290 milliosmol per kilogram of water. Her urine output is 2 liters per 24 hours or 1.38 millimeter per minute. Uh, how do we make this conversion? So 2 liters is 2,000 mLs, and in a day, in 24 hours, we have 1,440 minutes. So if we divide 2,000 by 1,440, we get 1 1.38 millimeter per minute. Okay, urine osmolality is 580 milliosm per kilogram of water. What is the osmolar clearance? Again, osmolar clearance, we get urine osm 580. We divide that by 290, so we get 2. We multiply by 2, which is the urine volume, so we get 4 liters per 24 hours, or 2.8 millimeter per minute. Now, if we want to calculate the free water clearance, we get negative 2. What does this mean? What, what, what is negative 2? 
Now, I, I'd like you now to imagine that the kidneys have filtered four liters of urine before we reach the collecting tubule, okay? So we have four liters of urine and the osmolality of those four liters is similar to the plasma, it's 290. Now, if we extract two liters, if the collecting tubules under the effect of ADH, vasopressin, extract two liters, then we are left with two liters and what's the osmolality is going to be 580. Okay, I'm going to say that again. So we are starting with four liters, okay, per 24 hours, and that urine is isoosmolar to the plasma, 290. And then in the collecting tubule, we are going to extract water. How much? Two liters of free water per 24 hours. Then the urine that is left is concentrated. So these 290 times 4 now is going to be only in 2 liters. So what's the final osmolality of the urine? It's 580. So this is how you get a negative free water clearance. And this is a normal situation. In a normal person, we get urine osmolality, 300, 400. Every time we said urine osmolality is higher than plasma osmolality, free water clearance is going to be negative, meaning that the kidneys are extracting water from the urine before, before we, uh, we reach the final product, which will go into the bladder. Okay. Now, what about electrolyte free water clearance? Actually, electrolyte free water clearance is even more important than free water clearance. How do we get that? Well, real easy. We need serum sodium and we need urine sodium and urine potassium. Why? Sodium is the predominant plasma cation, right? While both sodium and potassium are the predominant urine cation. So if we take the equation for osmolar clearance, which is C osm equals V, then times U osm divided by plasma osm, the V will stay the same, but instead of urine osm, we're going to put urine sodium plus urine potassium. And instead of plasma osm, we're going to put just plasma sodium because those are the predominant cations. And this will give us the equation for electrolyte free water clearance. So instead of just saying free water clearance, we're saying electrolyte free water clearance. So this is the amount of water in the urine that is free of electrolytes, that is free essentially of potassium and sodium. And this equation is more useful than the free water clearance when we are dealing with sodium disorders, with hyponatremia and hypernatremia. Now, this equation is needed to calculate how much water we need to give patients with hypernatremia. We haven't talked about hypernatremia yet. It is coming. Also, it's helpful to determine if fluid restriction is enough, is sufficient to treat patients with hyponatremia. Let's expand on this very interesting idea. So we have this equation on the screen, and we notice that the numerator, we have urine, sodium, plus potassium. And in the denominator, we have plasma sodium. So if urine, sodium, and potassium equal plasma sodium, then the electrolyte free water clearance is going to be zero. So plasma sodium is not going to change because the patient is not absorbing water and, or, and not excreting water. Okay. Now, if urine sodium plus urine potassium are low, so if when we do this division, urine sodium plus potassium divided by plasma sodium, if we get less than one, it means that the patient is excreting free water. The, free, the electrolyte free water clearance is positive, meaning the patient is losing free water in the urine. And then what's going to happen to plasma sodium if you lose free water is going to increase. So you're going to gradually have hypernatremia. And we'll talk about that more when we discuss hypernatremia. On the other hand, if you have a lot of sodium and potassium salts in the urine where urine sodium and urine potassium are high, urine sodium and potassium divided by plasma sodium is more than one 
This means that the electrolyte-free water clearance is negative. What does that mean? It means that the patient is absorbing water. So what's going to happen to plasma sodium? It's going to fall because the patient is basically excreting the salt and absorbing the water. Case study one, 71 year old man with polyuria, urine volume over four liters, serum osm is 290, serum electrolytes are normal, urine osm is 260, urine sodium is 80, urine potassium is 30. Is this polyuria, which we said urine volume over three liters per 24 hours, is due to water diuresis? Do we have excess water? Is he drinking a lot and urinating a lot? Or is it solute diuresis, like sometimes what might happen in a patient in the hospital. You're giving a lot of normal saline, for example, and you're getting a lot of urine output. Okay, let's calculate the osmolar clearance. C osm equals V times urine osm divided by plasma osm. We have all that information and we get 3.6 liter per 24 hours. So the uh, free water clearance is only 0.4. Most of the clearance is what? Osmolar clearance. So we have a lot of solutes, a lot of salts in the urine. So this patient has solute diuresis due to high intake of sodium. Notice that his urine sodium is 80 per liter times 4. This is 320 of sodium. If you add uh, sodium and potassium, 110, and you, divide, and, and you multiply by 4, you get 440. So this is a very high intake of solutes. And uh, so the patient is urinating a lot, what, to get rid of these solutes. So what do we do? Well, if you're giving a lot of saline, maybe you have to stop. The patient will have to restrict his sodium intake, etc. Let's look at case number two. 70-year-old woman with SIADH. She's uv uvolemic on exam, like you would expect with SIADH. Serum sodium is 126, potassium 3.7, serum osm is low, it's hypoosmolar, hyponatremia 266, and uh, urine sodium is 91, it's high like you would expect with SIADH, urine potassium is 49, urine osmolality is high, 621, also like you would expect with SIADH. Urine volume is 1.5, Serum sodium is not improving, it's still 126, and we already placed the patient on water restriction of 1.5 1, 1 liter per day, and she's trying hard to comply, and she is compliant, because this is what we found on the urine collection. So the patient is adherent to fluid restriction. Why fluid restriction is not effective? We, we see that a lot. This is why. You calculate electrolyte free water clearance. Okay, as a general rule, if urine sodium plus urine potassium is more than serum sodium, then fluid restriction is not going to work. Why? Electrolyte free water clearance will give us urine volume 1.5 and then 91 plus 49 divided by 26, we get negative 0.166. What does negative mean? It means that the patient is absorbing free water. So really, it doesn't matter what you do with fluid restriction because the numerator is more than the denominator. The patient is always going to absorb something, okay? This is why fluid restriction is not effective in some patients. So you can, if fluid restriction is not effective, just look at urine sodium, urine potassium, and, and plasma, plasma sodium, and you can figure that out in, in a second. So you need to do other things uh, for for the, for this uh, for this patient other than fluid restriction. Maybe uh, if they're in the hospital, maybe they need tolvaptan. Uh, maybe they need three percent saline if they're symptomatic. Maybe you need to use a, a loop uh, diuretic like uh, a furosemide, for example. Um, I hope that uh, these concepts are clear. If this is new to you, please uh, watch the video more than one time. If you are taking a, a board type exam, especially the nephrology board, you really need to know uh, these formulas. They will come up uh, a lot. Um, next uh, episode, uh, we're going to talk about management of hyponatremia.